Are you a man looking for an intensive program to help you overcome sexually addictive behaviors? Gateway to Freedom is your answer. Gateway to Freedom is a three-day workshop for men seeking to overcome any destructive sexual habits. Whether married, single, or divorced, Gateway to Freedom will help men regain hope for a new life of purity and real contentment. The workshop is conducted by experts in the field of sexual addiction recovery with decades of combined experience. Read testimony of workshop alumni at gatewaymen.com. Get all the info and register online at gatewaymen.com or call 1-800-49-PURITY. Hi, my name is Jonathan, and I'm the founder of the Gateway to Freedom Workshop. I want to personally invite you to register for our next workshop coming up June 23rd through the 25th in Texas in the lovely Hill Country. So call us today at 1-800-49-PURITY. That's one 800 497 8748 or visit gatewaymen.com. You're listening to Pure Sex Radio, training men, educating women. Brought to you by Be Broken Ministries. Visit us on the web at puresexradio.com. Good day, radio listeners. Welcome to this edition of the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. We're glad to have you here with us. My name is Jonathan, and I'm excited because we have back with us again this time on the phone. We have Forrest Benedict. So, Forrest, thank you for uh, coming back again. Yeah, glad to be back. Yeah, so last time uh, uh, Forrest shared with us his story and just how, um, you know, from the, the family he grew up in and and exposure to pornography and just, uh, you know, the ultimate, uh, ultimately leading into a, an addiction to pornography and, and then how, uh, God just really used a, a catalytic event in his life to, to really propel him into recovery. And so for the last 14 years, he's been on this incredible <clears throat> journey of recovery and growth. And now he is a, a, a therapist out in California and so we wanted to have you back again for us because you've written a book. It's called Life After Lust, and we would love for you to be able to share with our listeners maybe some things that that they could expect to find in that book and just some, maybe we can get into some nuts and bolts of what would you do for the listener out there? What would you share with them um, that are going to be key elements to living this life after lust? So why don't you share with us just some things that would be uh, helpful to our listeners? Okay. Yeah, and I'd be happy to do that. So um, so I wrote this book. You know, I, I had written many um, articles on the topic of sexual addiction um, on my blog and on my uh, work blog for doing this work. And, you know, a, a colleague that I work with um, had recommended that I bring them all together and so I started bringing them together and, and realized that um, this needed to be something that would be usable for someone. It wouldn't just be a bunch of random articles put together. And so I organized them into the categories of mindset, mastery, and mission. And so there's, um, I, I ended up writing some additional chapters. Um, some of them are stories from my own recovery um, and, and really lessons that I think would um, challenge the reader, um, but also equip. And there's a lot of tools in this book. Um, additionally, I wanted to inspire people because I think so many people dealing with this, um, with sexual addiction, feel hopeless and feel like there isn't mm-hmm. a way out. And so I really wanted to pave the way of uh, kind of give the picture of what that could look like. Um, and so the mindset section um, is there's 19 essential mindsets that I introduce through diff- for ver- through various um, articles or chapters. And so some of those mindsets are like recovery from sexual addiction is difficult, possible, and worth the effort. Um, one of them that I, I so strongly believe, and I actually really think that this makes a difference to believe this, is that permanent sobriety is always possible. Um, 
you know, I, I think in, in some recovery circles, this isn't really emphasized. It's not really, Mm -hmm. it's more like, you know, you've heard, probably heard recovery is part or no relapse is part of recovery. And, and while I know the intention behind that is to not have people beat themselves up if they relapse, I I really don't want people to use that as a justification to relapse. You know, I feel like, um, yeah, it, it might happen. And especially as you're learning how to be sober and how to live the recovery lifestyle. But, um, just the belief that you could, that you could be free and that you're willing to do everything you need to do to be free. And, and I, I, could I, I sometimes, put, I sometimes think of it this way for us that, um, mm-hmm. you know, because I, I wrote a blog, uh, post many years ago, um, that was addressing the issue of, this idea of, you know, once an addict, always an addict in the sense that you're well, lo- yeah. you're, you're kind of locked into this label. And yeah. uh, for those of us, especially who come from a, a Christian worldview, a biblical worldview, I was like, that mm-hmm. doesn't, that's not, that's not connecting with me. That's not lining up yeah. with what this idea of the Bible that says that, you know, for those of us who are in Christ, there is the very same power that raised Jesus from the grave now resides in us. So how can, mm-hmm. how can the power that resurrected a dead man not have, not have the power to overcome an addiction? It just didn't make sense yeah. to me. And so I, the way I sometimes, yeah. sometimes the way I will describe it to people is that we're really kind of talking about the difference in terms of what our vision is. Do we really mm-hmm. want to? Do we want to lay out a vision uh, for people in recovery that we're just looking for abstinence, or do we want to lay out yeah. a vision that says no, there can be freedom? And I believe that yeah. those are two very different paths that people take then in recovery. No, I I totally agree, and you know I I definitely am one to count days and weeks and months and years, but I think we cannot. Um, there's a downfall to that too. It's like, it's focused on a good thing, but not the only thing. Mm -hmm. And we, our, our, our worth and our progress is not dependent just on whether we're looking at something or not. Right. So I, I definitely agree with that, that God, you know, God wants to change our hearts and he wants to teach us to trust him. And I mean, teach us to care for ourselves even. And, so I think, yeah, it's just a totally different mindset. If you're, most people won't get the help they need or, or take, you know, do the work they need to do if they're just thinking, well, I just need to avoid pornography. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so much more. Yeah. And, and let me ask you this question because I want to go back to the first essential mindset that you mentioned. And I want to ask you how you help people get past that one. Because when you say that recovery from sexual addiction mm-hmm. is difficult, um, isn't that yeah. isn't that not the first thing that people want to hear? <laughs> no, I know that that isn't. No, you know what? But it's like I would rather tell somebody, "Hey, this is this was the hardest thing I've done in my life, but it was possible." I, mm-hmm. you know, I'd much. I know nobody wants to hear that, especially those of us that struggle with addiction, it's like, you know, we just want a quick fix. You know, we just mm-hmm. want something that's easy, that's, um, you know, the microwavable, you know? Um, so yeah, no, it's definitely not what people want to hear, but it's what they need to hear, you know? So it's like, it's like getting somebody ready to climb Mount Everest. It's like, Hey, this will probably be the hardest hike of your life, but I'd rather you, go into it knowing that and but also knowing that it's possible and that you you'll get all the support you need uh definitely like you said god and his power is there too and and that's going to make a huge difference so you're not in this by yourself um but it is going to take a hundred percent of mm-hmm. your effort a hundred percent of god's effort that's my view um and yeah, it'll be difficult, but it'll be one of the most meaningful things you've done. Mm-hmm. 
and you know the ripple effect of it will be amazing. You know, well, and I you'll think, get free. I, yeah. I, I think it fits with, you know, you've got another one of these essential mindsets later on that says rather mm-hmm. rather than doing as little as possible, I will do as much as necessary to recover. And I think it's, yeah. I think it's important to put those two together. Listen, this is difficult. It's possible. It's worth it. And you know what? I need to make a commitment to the proper effort that's required in this. Now, yeah, I, I always kind of couch that with the idea of saying, when we understand where the source of the ultimate transformation that comes in terms of this idea of truly being free and and having real mm-hmm. peace and joy in our beings, we, we we really do believe that that comes from Christ. But even Jesus, yeah. when he healed the invalid at the pool of Bethesda, he did this amazing thing. He said, get up. But then he said, pick up your mat yeah. and walk. So there was this incredible mm-hmm. you know, invitation into the healing that Jesus had mm-hmm. provided that says, you got to move your legs. <laughs> I'm not going to move yeah. them for you. Yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, I, I totally believe that that's how God works, you know, and that's how we... We learn to trust him by, you know, taking a step of faith, just like that. Um, but but it's a it's a joint effort. He's not going to make us heal, or just it, you know. I haven't seen anyone just say a prayer and then it's it's done, you know. But I mean, we learn so much from the process, you mm-hmm. know, like learning to trust him and and all of the difficult things along the way. That it's like we're we're so grateful for the, we become grateful for the journey, not the destination. And, you know, none of us is at the de- destination anyways. Right. If we're still here on the surface, you know. So what are some um, so other yeah, things, think, what are some other things that we can, we can pull out of the book to, uh, to, to let people know about what's in there and some of the things that they can, they can glean from it. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm definitely some things, from doing this work, you know, I'm very active in this work. I'm re- at this point leading eight groups a week. Um, and just, you know, and, and that's also working with the partners as well. And so one of the things that's really sticks out to me is just so important is that um, this isn't just about the person seeking recovery. You know, we have to look at as hard as it is, the damage that this has caused others. We have to, um, you know, our, if our partner has been wounded by this, we have to make sure they get help and we have to take responsibility for that. And, and really that can actually fuel our resolve to say, you know what, this, I cannot be wounding my partner in this way. I need to do whatever I need to do. Mm -hmm. And so um, part of it is, so learning to care for those, wounded by our addiction. Um, there's, there's a lot of very, um, basic tools or, or concepts presented in the book, like how to disclose to your partner what you've done. And, and I, I wrote that out of seeing it done wrong so many times. And, and there's definitely many wrong ways to do it. And, um, you know, I got, as a therapist that specializes in, specializes in this area, um, we have a very structured way to do it. And so that's one thing I, I think I've seen relationships end when it was done wrong uh, or done in the wrong attitude. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, how to do that, I think, is a basic tool. Not only how to do that, like to share the everything, but to do it. You know, when you if you slip or if you do something secretive or if you lie, you know, how do you learn to come clean about that and mm-hmm. and you know humbly disclose that? Um, well, I love a lot of the yeah. I love some of the like you said a lot of the practical things in here, and I'm actually looking at two two skills that you have in here to master that I'm thinking, man, those two alone could be the worth the price of the book for a lot of people. And one of them is maintaining recovery structure and self-care over the holidays. 
And the other one is oh, ma- yeah. maintaining recovery structure and self-care on vacation. I'm thinking oh, yeah. those are super practical that a lot of times we uh-huh. realize, man, holidays and vacations, those can be such trigger points for our, our old uh-huh. patterns and behaviors. So I, I think know. it's important for the, the listeners to know that this is not just some kind of theoretical, you know, philosophical book, but that you really uh-huh. roll up your sleeves and you help people try to understand on a practical level how to deal with these things. Uh huh. Yeah, definitely. And you know, that's, something I've learned with my own recovery that I know I'm vulnerable on vacation. So that that's probably all of us, you know, I, I, you know, there's the anonymity of travel, um, you know, and I've been the guy that's like calling up the hotel and saying, yeah, take my, take my TV out of my room before I come. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, these proactive things that maybe we don't think about, but it's, it makes a difference. So, you know, some of that, those those things I think are so important for us to think about before we get in those situations, um, and and this is a big one that I present in the book, and I'm kind of constantly talking about this with my clients. Is is it's this idea of um, you know how we relate to ourselves, and you know the science shows that the more we beat ourselves up for our mistakes or for you know thinking that something's wrong with us that we beat ourselves up, the less likely we are to actually change. And so I presented in a couple chapters this idea of self-compassion, which essentially, you know, it's not justifying our behavior, but it's learning to, like, be caring towards ourselves when we mess up. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's, like, uh, that's key for a lot of people because they really think, that, you know, if they're just mean to themselves or they're just, you know, whip themselves back into submission, that that's going to make a difference. And what it really does is it raises our cortisol levels and we feel like we're physically attacked, but we're really just learning, you know, we're attacking ourselves. Um, and well, so to me, that's that's key. Yeah. And in many ways, when we're doing that, we're only reinforcing the false shame identity that is so prevalent in in anybody who ends up getting hooked on on pornography, other sexual sin. Because you think about it, it's like, okay, when we were kids, we had, um, at some point, we all had somebody else's brokenness dumped into our lives. And out of mm-hmm. that, then that creates this confusion surrounding identity. It's like, what is my worth? Who am I? Where do I belong? And mm-hmm. and that's where shame starts to get its roots sunk in. And so if we have yeah. this strong shame identity and then we enter into recovery, I would say that so many times it's it's way easier on the front end to begin modifying behavior and mm-hmm. not recognize the incredible need that it is to deal with that shame identity. And like you're saying, hey, we need to learn mm-hmm. We need to learn how to respond in a different way to the the stumblings that we may have along the journey instead of letting that mm-hmm. shame identity rise up and say, see, you're worthless. You're never going to make it. You, you're a scumbag. Yeah. And, you know, you might as well just quit. Um, instead, we need to start having a different paradigm from which we're processing those those stumblings. Yeah. No, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, most of us are like experts at, you know, beating ourselves up and and staying in that I'm worthless place. And that, you know, it's just to emphasize, even the science shows that that's not helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, it's certainly not from a, from a Christian perspective, it's certainly not how God sees us. So it's, it's definitely not going to help us move forward. So you have this, uh, you, you've got these three sort of sections to the book, and the last one is mission. Why don't you help us understand what you are trying to portray there in terms of, of mission as it pertains to life after lust? Yeah, no, that, that piece, that whole section is really dear to me because, um, you know, I, I talked about my own journey of kind of the, the freer I got from my addiction, really connecting with who I am, what are the gifts that God's given me? You know, what's the ripple effect that my life is supposed to make in this world? And I've always been 
I'd say probably one of the most convicting or um, meaningful stories in the Bible for me is the gift that, or the the parable of the talents. Mm-hmm. You know, but just this idea that God gave us each something, and we really are responsible for using that. You know, making something of that in in this life, and so. You know, there's there's a couple of chapters in this section about, you know, finding our purpose as we recover from our pain, um, learning to live in alignment with our values as we get free. But then there's also some things that I just believe so strongly in that about that, that we need to, as we get free and even as parents, that we need to protect our kids from pornography. Um Additionally, we need to, um, I think, be part of this change that that God wants to do in our in our world and our culture about you know learning to we need to stand up to pornography in our in our world. You know that I you know there's so many people that are beginning to stand up to this and saying no, that's not okay to have in our communities. You know I'm mm-hmm. I I believe very strongly that. You know, I'm not going to go to a gas station that sells pornography. You know, I'm not going to go, you know, to the burger place that objectifies women on all their TV commercials. Like, I believe that's so important that we, you know, make make an impact in our world to stand up against pornography and not just be like, oh, well, I'm free. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's what matters. That's all that matters is me being free. But you know, part of this too is reaching out and helping others, you know, like, like you, you do with your ministry, you know, you've experienced your healing and now you have this huge, um, heart for helping others. I mean, there's so much to that, that God wants to use us once we get free mm-hmm. as, as a light in the lives of others. Um, well, and that's so one of the things that we try to to promote when we think about the process through which somebody who has gotten bound up in a sexual stronghold needs to go mm-hmm. through in order to be set free is we, we kind of, we put it in these three words, heal, mm-hmm. grow, serve. And so many times, oh, yeah. a lot of recovery programs they get they get very tunnel visioned into the heal and the grow piece maybe, um, uh-huh. but so often then, almost in an unintentional way that creates environments that keep people very self focused. So they're mm. they're they're coming in obviously they're self focused when they come in because they're completely <laughs> drowning in a sexual oh. you know yeah. addiction and so that's we know that all addiction makes a person self focused. Um, yeah, but the thing is, is we're doing, sometimes we create these environments that say, Hey, let's look at your pain. Let's look at your past. Let's look at all these things. And that's all necessary. But if we don't, if we don't cast a larger vision, that's why I like the fact that you've got this mission section to the book. If we don't cast this larger vision that says, do you realize that the reason that you're going to go through this very difficult and painful process of getting free and getting well is because there are others who are going to need what you can offer at that point. Mm-hmm. And so if you stay stuck in this idea of saying, listen, it's all about just me kind of getting fat and happy and healthy, uh-huh. then then we're not really, you haven't, If in my mind, you haven't really completed the process of recovery. Because not until you're yeah. serving others, not until you're really taking all these insights and experiences that you've had along the way of getting free and investing them in others, I really don't feel like you've, mm-hmm. I don't feel like you've hit the pinnacle of recovery. And that's kind of mm-hmm. the, and, and it's amazing because when people get that vision and realize, oh, you mean there's more than, there's more of a purpose to this process than just me getting off of pornography, they start to realize, mm-hmm. I see it now. I start to see the bigger vision. And I think it creates momentum and, yeah. and, um, and a real, you know, drive to say, oh, there's something bigger than me in this. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. Yeah. We, there's so much of an impact we can make on others and and that we have that responsibility and and some of that you know i know not everybody that gets free from this is going to do this as like their their ministry or their career you know but i mean they're definitely going to have other people in their life that struggle um 
and, and especially, like I mentioned, those of us that are parents. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we think our kids are going to get through this life without seeing pornography, um, you know, I think we're, we're out of reality ourselves. And we have so much work to do, even as parents, on protecting our kids, preparing our kids, um, leading by example, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that in, of, in and of itself is a major mission, <laughs> you know. Absolutely, yeah. That's really the best way yeah. to parent our kids, right, is actually to be the example instead of just saying, hey, you know, let me give you all the information. You need to be pure, but I'm going to go look at pornography. It's like that's not <laughs> – that never works, yeah. you know. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, we have a and, we have yeah. about we have about five minutes left, and what I would love to do is if you know if you mm-hmm. think about the 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 person out there that is listening, that they're struggling right now, they're not doing well. They're they're either mm-hmm. either they haven't stepped on this path of recovery, or they've really just been stumbling so much and relapsing a lot. What would be your word of encouragement that you would want to give to them? Uh, to help them get back on the path or even just take those first initial steps of pursuing freedom? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I think just really letting them know that there's hope, you know, that there's so many people that have gone ahead or gone before, you know, we've found that there's hope. Um, It's going to take work you know it's going to take surrender it's going to take things that you you don't see right now so there is a lot of uncertainty with it you know it's it's new it's a new road but um but it's worth it you know it's it's scary but it's worth it and you know that that you're worth it too that you know it it, it may, we may feel that we don't we're not worth that effort um, that maybe the people we love aren't even worth that effort. But, but yeah, I, I just hope that people would see that, that freedom is possible. Mm-hmm. It's what God wants for us. Uh, it's a worthwhile endeavor. And just do whatever you have to do to to go on that road. Yeah, and, um, and, and listeners, I want you to really, I, I want you to let that resonate right now, wherever you are. If you're driving in your car or if you're taking a jog or working out or just sitting at home, I want that to really sink deep into your soul. Uh, So many times we we struggle with receiving that truth that you are worth recovery, that you are worth rescuing. In fact, I used to say that people are priceless. I don't say that anymore because I believe God declared a very exact price on us when oh, yeah. he, when his son was put on the cross. You are worth the life of God's son. And if he was willing to go to that length to show you your worth, then you're certainly worth recovery. So let that really mm-hmm. wash over your your mind and your soul today. And and mm-hmm. Forrest, why don't you uh, also, before we close here, just share again where folks can get the book, where they can get uh, your website and just other resources. Yeah, yeah. Well, Life After Lust uh, is available on Amazon in both paperback and Kindle versions. Um, I do have lifeafterlust.com. And, you know, forestbenedict.com is my blog where I do, you know, a lot of writing about um, this topic and and other topics. I love writing about just connection with God Mm -hmm. in general. Um, but yeah, those those are some places that um, that there's some resources available, um, and so yeah, I'd love to connect with anyone that's been impacted by this. But mm-hmm. hopefully, they'll find us to be a really helpful resource. Yeah, well, thank you so much for writing the book and for spending time with us these last couple episodes. And uh, you know, may God continue to bless you in your work that you're doing. I'm I'm excited to hear that you got eight groups going on every week, and that. People are getting yeah. getting helped, and so uh, just thank you again for being with us, Forrest, and and um, look forward to to hearing what what lies ahead for you in ministry. Yeah, no, thank you so much for this time with you, and I'm really grateful to be here. Mm-hmm. 
Well, listeners, we're also grateful that you've been with us, and we look forward to having you back here next time on the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. Pure Sex Radio is paid for by Be Broken Ministries. Visit us online at puresexradio.com.